Now you get to a point where you get to the door handle itself. Now, with a digital wrap, it's not always possible to remove everything that you have. So you need to work around this, what you have. So you get to where you actually want to get to the bottom working this thing in without actually causing everything else to fail. So now with a digital wrap in most, type, in most cases you would actually trim it out on the edge but you get a lot of clients that don't want that. They actually want the whole thing to be wrapped. So you start by one point, working your way down slowly, getting it down, getting it worked in, and then you don't cut it on the edge of the, the handle itself. When doing that, you're just creating a whole new problem for yourself, whereby you'll actually work it in. If you cut it out on the edge, as soon as you start working it in, the vinyl will start making a loop on the one side, which leaves you with quite a big gap you don't want. Getting to a point where you've actually worked it into there, it then becomes a bit easier when it comes to the finishing. So from there, you can actually just work your way down to the bottom. Try not to cut it right on the handle itself. Sometimes it will leave a little line, which you don't want. So once that part is done, the rest of it is fairly simple. So now you can eat up this whole thing. It's not like it needs to get to a point where it needs to line up with anything else. So you can actually now take this thing and work it in completely without any stress on this little part. Just make sure that when you do work it in, that it doesn't get stuck anywhere, overheating, overstretching it into one little spot. These handles can be a problem, but not if you face it the correct way. Also, when we come to a place like this, where it actually goes in a little bit deeper, sometimes easier just to put a little leaf cut. Which will make the workability and the working in process so much easier.
countries. Yeah, at the end of the day, you, come, you get to a point where you work everything in, where there's no stress on the vinyl. It doesn't matter how good the vinyl is or how bad the vinyl is. If you follow the correct procedures and working it in the way it's supposed to be, I want to say almost like a, it's almost like law. You know, you you work with it to a certain point, and then from there, let let the rest just fall into place and take shape the way it's supposed to be. So you can use the cheap, you can use a cheap vinyl, you can use a good vinyl. I wouldn't say I wouldn't recommend using a cheap vinyl on something like this. You know, especially when you want to <clears throat> deliver a, a proper um, top grade finish. But it's always nice to know that you can actually take a vinyl, you can work with it, and it actually does what you want it to do. The nice thing about working it in the way, you know, basically your law of vinyl, you can then go and heat it up afterwards. It will actually just stay in one specific spot. It will go nowhere and you can, your finishing on your product actually becomes so much better. Even if you use a good vinyl, if you use the wrong method of applying it, you'll get to a point where the vinyl is failing and then you will say, you know what, there's a bad batch or this isn't working. That's a problem for me. But the biggest problem is, and the biggest problem that everybody has is using the correct vinyl but using the wrong method of, a, of getting it down. Using the right method of putting, getting vinyl down, you can, you can almost use any kind of material to actually get it down. Make sure that when you do cut it, you go with the flow of whatever is available to your um, using something like this quite convenient. You can either use this or this little tool as well. We get into small little places where squeegees sometimes don't work. That's also where that flex trim tool, because it's plastic, it actually works very well on this. See, when you get to a point where you use um, this kind of material and it's a white material, you have a bit of, I wouldn't say a bit of a slip up, cutting it short, you don't notice it because it's a white on white. When it gets to white on black or, you know, even black is actually not that problem, but if you get to black on white, that's a big problem. The thing that sells a, a wrap to anybody, it doesn't matter who the client is, doesn't matter what vehicle he drives, is the way you finish his vehicle. Whether he drives a, a hundred dollar vehicle or a million dollar vehicle, it's the way you finish the vehicle that actually counts at the end of the day. 
you want that specific person to come back in time whether they have another vehicle or same vehicle that needs to be rewrapped you know sometimes the smallest little vehicle or the cheapest little vehicle can sometimes end up that specific person can end up being the most loyal client so you know getting a neat finish at the end of the day is what what is the most important thing